leaves, an autumn pop-up book, A leaf seems simple, but leaves do many things. A leaf contains green chlorophyll that helps it use sunlight, water, and air to make food for the plant. As days shorten, Autumn's brilliance flutters down. With less daylight, chlorophyll disappears from leaves and bright colors show. As leaves drop, some birds migrate to warmer places. Hungry critters hide under the layers. The hedgehog curls up in a prickly ball to sleep, its spine sticking out for protection. Wet, matted leaves are homes for frogs, insects, snails, and slugs. Leaves rustle as animals hustle for food. Chipmunks scurry among leaves and stuff their chubby cheeks with seeds. Squirrels bury acorns and nuts under leaves to store for winter feeding. Mushrooms pop up on the forest floor. Mushrooms often grow in damp, leaf-covered locations. Deer eat mushrooms, including some kinds that are poisonous to humans. Leaf-lined burrows are cozy for dozing. In autumn, some animals such as bears, skunks, chipmunks, mice, frogs, and snakes prepare for deep winter sleep. change. They are so amazing. As the season turned, the forest was dressed in new colors of rich amber, burned orange, and chestnut brown. Little Red the Fox was happy because now it would be much easier to hide. would be hard to spy among the dried brown leaves, burgundy bushes, and coppery grasses. Only in the open meadow 
would Hazel the Dormouse be able to catch sight of Little Red? Little Red and Hazel spent hours and hours playing hide and seek together. The two friends love jumping and rolling in the crisp dried leaves. They love the rustling sound. The leaves are laughing with us, said Hazel joyfully. During these moments of happiness, the cold air hinted of the coming winter. Little Red felt a tinge of sadness. For Red, the smell of winter meant one thing, loneliness. Soon, Little Red's very best friend in the world would settle down in a warm burrow to hibernate. Hazel, perhaps this season you will sleep less, said Little Red hopefully trying to sound cheerful. Little Red, I am no fox. I am a dormouse. I'd like to stay awake and keep you company, but you know, in the end, I must always sleep. So Little Red started to think of ways to keep Hazel from falling asleep. What if I could make the sun stay high? Then winter would not be so cold. Hmm, what if I could ask the forest to hold its fruit? Then there would be food all winter long. <laughs> what if I tickled Hazel to stay awake? Then we could play and play. The Dormouse started to yawn. Ooh. Hazel? I want us to stay together forever, pleaded the friend. Little Red, I promise, when the winter gives way to spring, I will be here for you, and we will play again. I know, Hazel, but before you sleep, May I tell you a story? Why, yes. Oh. As long as it is short, replied Hazel sleepily, with head nodding and eyes closing. So Little Red curled up on the forest floor, and Hazel nestled into the soft, warm tail to listen. But before a word of the story was spoken, the two friends had fallen fast asleep together. Tagalongs. 
Julia wakes up to a beautiful sunrise. She beams. Today is the perfect day to hike up to Pancake Peak. The air is fresh. Julia is prepared. And she is traveling by herself, just the way she likes it. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Julia buzzes through the wildflowers of Muffin Meadow. Click! She spelunks through the darkest depths of Black Coffee Cave. She balances bravely across Bacon Bridge. Julia crests Hash Brown Hill in record time. She has a quick picnic for one. Grumble, grumble, grumble. It's just a little farther until she reaches the turnaround at Pancake Peak. The panorama at Pancake Peak is perfectly peaceful. She has it all to herself just the way she <laughs> A band of bickering creatures disturbs the silence and the view. They notice Julia. We're saved! Cries the tiny pack rat. This nice girl can help us get down! What? Where is a girl? Asks the javelina, squinting and fiddling with his broken glasses. A stranger? Eep! Cries the frightened porcupine. Julia backs away. Oh, I think there's been a misunderstanding. You see, I need to be home in time for dinner, and... My name's Fitz! Interrupts the pack rat. This blind bloke is Lewis, and that lovely bundle of quills is Violet. Stranded, squeaks Violet. Getting to the peak was fine, but when I saw how high we were, I poofed. Which broke my glasses, grumbles Lewis. I can't see a thing. And popped the cargo balloon I was using to lighten my load. Groans fits. Now my pack is too heavy for me to carry. So, what do you say? Can we tag along? Pleads the helpless trio. This is not the way Julia likes it. But once they safely return to the base of Pancake Peak, the relieved tagalongs squeal with glee. 
Julia, you rule ya! They break for a sunny group picnic at Hash Brown Hill. Grumble, grumble, grumble. As Fitz opens his backpack, Julia exclaims, Whoa, a rat's pack is where the snacks are at. After they gobble some of the load, Fitz can carry the pack himself. He shouts, Onward to Bacon Bridge! But Bacon Bridge is broken. We're doomed! Frets Violet. Don't worry, says Fitz. What kind of pack rat would I be without a pack raft? <laughs> you save the, the day, Fitz! Everyone cheers. should keep moving, worries Violet. Black Coffee Cave is getting darker by the minute. Oh no! Julia gasps at the mouth of the cave. I've lost my headlamp. My flashlight is gone too! Fitz cries. Follow me, grumbles Lewis. I can't see, but I have an exquisite nose. Do I smell wildflowers at the other end of this cave? That's Muffin Meadow, exclaims Julia. Come on, everyone. Lewis can get us through this. Shouts. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! <laughs> Wait, what happened to Muffin Meadow? Whispers Julia. Fits. Nobody's gonna chomp my friends! Violet roars. Righteous defense, Violet. If it hadn't been for you, we'd all be plant food exclaims Julia. Speaking of food, do you smell that? asks Lewis. It smells like spaghetti and pizza, says Violet. And french fries and cherry exclaims Fitz. It's dinner at my house, says Julia, and we are right on time.
As the tag-along sit down to dinner, Julia hears a knock at the gate. Knock, knock, knock. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Tonight, Julia is feasting with all her new friends. Just the way she likes it. Lion of the Sky, haiku for all seasons. Spring. I am a wind bird, sky skipper, diamond dipper, Dancing on your string. Colorful flowers. We sprout on stems of people. Bloom only in rain. Twigs, sticks, mud, feathers. I'm a closely woven home for cheap chirping chicks. Here's my secret. Soft petals hide inside me. Coming soon, a bloom. I'm a wriggling tube. Soft underground tunneler. I fear early birds. In the still damp air, you sail leaf boats across me. Tiny sidewalk pond. Summer. My fluffy seeds drift. Tiny puffs lift in the breeze. And land who knows where. Wicked wine with wings. That's me, buzzing in your ear. Closer, closer, ouch! I'm towers and moat, molded with hands, cups, buckets. Mighty, till high tide. I love summer fields. Left field, right field, center field. I fly to them all. Fire in our bellies. We flicker flash in twilight. Rich meadow of stars. You gasp as I roar, my mane exploding, sizzling, lion of the sky. Fall. My first day outfit is fresh paint and polished floors. Here come my new friends. I'm a yellow train, carrying thoughts from your brain to the waiting page. No. 
I'm red, delicious. With a quick twist of your wrist, I'm free from the tree. Reward for raking. A crispy crowd of loud crunch when you jump in me. I perch on the porch. Spooky face frozen in place. Fire burning inside. I search under oaks and gather tasty treasures. Winter is coming. Winter. We are knitted twins, soft as kittens, warm as hugs, waiting to hold hands. I'm cold confetti, falling from a crystal sky, blanketing the town. I'm thin silver blades, spinning circles, carving lines. You and I, we fly. Lie down in whiteness, kick and swish and wave your arms. Give me winter wings. Firelight from the past. I wink in the frozen sky, waiting for wishes. In fur coat and cave, I exhale white clouds of breath. Dream of sun, green, spring. with arms strong and warm. My papa is a soldier, and sometimes soldiers go away for a while, to help for a while, so I can stay and play. But if I could, I'd ride in Papa's backpack and whisper in his ear. <laughs> I'd ride with Papa side by side, so when he goes, I'm near. Side by side. 
by side, we'd ride the storm. And side by side, we'd find our way. He'd hold my hand. He'd touch my hair. He'd kiss my face and eyes. Me and my papa. Papa, papa, pa. Me and my papa. Papa, papa, pa. My papa is a soldier with arms strong and warm. My papa is a soldier, and sometimes soldiers go away for a while to help for a while so I can stay and play. But if I could, I'd ride in Papa's backpack and whisper in his ear. I'd ride with Papa side by side, so when he goes, I'm near. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Just as fair. And having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. the first for another day. Mm. 
Yet knowing how way <sighs> leads on to way. I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. That has made all the difference. <laughs> Ronnie and his grit. Let me tell you a story about Ronnie Lott. When others gave up, Ronnie did not. Ronnie always did what he set his mind to, dedicated and tough, through and through. As a boy, he bought shoes that were red as fire. The commercial said they'd make him fly higher. So with all of his effort and all of his might, Ronnie prepared for his very first flight. But all his excitement and thrill didn't last. He jumped through the air, but came crashing down fast. It was after his unfortunate plunk of a tumble that Ronnie felt something inside start to rumble. He sat there a bit, somewhat battered and bruised, and brooded across from his new pair of shoes. Maybe these shoes won't make me jump high. Maybe it's me and how hard I try. That rumble in Ronnie is what we call grit. A voice that encouraged him, don't ever quit. Grit followed Ronnie as he grew and grew. Every time that he played or tried something new. He was skilled at sports and that helped him thrive, but grit always urged him, continue to strive. Grit had a voice that was strong and impactful, but Ronnie still needed to learn to be tactful. Like when his coach said, throw as hard as you can, and he knocked someone over. That wasn't the plan. Respect those around you, his dad would say. Ronnie listened and learned along the way. In high school, Ronnie joined the football team. 
and suddenly knew that he had a dream. When he put on his helmet and all of his gear, he felt that same rumble. His purpose was clear. While he missed some tackles and dropped some balls, he never gave up or stopped giving his all. When he fell, Grit told him, get back up again. When he lost, Grit said, I know we can win. His mistakes were chances to try a new way. And tomorrow was always a brilliant new day. Years passed, and he joined a professional team. Ronnie and his grit were achieving their dreams. Sometimes he got hurt, and sometimes his team lost. He kept doing his best, no matter the cost. One fateful day on the football field, he was put to the test, and his grit didn't yield. Ronnie got hurt. It was really a zinger. He arose from the play, losing part of his finger. But even that didn't stop him from reaching his dream and inspiring others, including his team. Today, Ronnie's football days are past, but his grit stays strong and always will last. He continues to give everything his all, whether teaching kids or playing ball. Every time he helps inspire someone, every time he cheers on his daughters or sons, grit is helping him follow through. Give this life all you've got. I believe in you. Have you listened closely to that voice deep inside? The one that's telling you never to hide? Next time you're down or feeling blue, remember that grit lives within you too. It's the whisper that says, yes, you can, yes, you can. It's the belief in yourself. It's your greatest fan. It's never too late to call up your grit, your own tiny voice that rumbles. Don't quit. If you don't have books, then what are you waiting for? Books is kids safe. It has storybooks that are brought to life. And third, it's fun. I like to read books about fantasy and love. I tell other kids to get books because it's full of stories and laughter. I'll read it on the go, in a car, in a plane, even in a train. I've never been on a train. Don't wait around. Ask your grown up to download books now. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. For more stories, try the Books app for free today.